Hi, this is Alan Rosenberg, and welcome to another edition of The Alan Rosenberg Show. I hope uh, my videos will start catching on if you're enjoying them. Please hit the subscribe button, and even more important, start telling your friends, because I'd love uh, people uh, to turn on to my videos. What I'm trying to do, basically, is turn you on to what I feel is some of the greatest music ever created, and probably music that you're not familiar with, because again, in today's world of Spotify, most people are only hearing just the tip of the iceberg, a couple of songs, and they're missing out on so much. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my probably top three favorite bands of all time, The Kinks. Um, I love The Kinks so much that uh, my family and us traveled to England a couple of years ago because there was a, a Broadway show over there on the West End about The Kinks. I knew it would never make it here, and it was perfect timing because between that and the Rolling Stones exhibitionism that was going over there, it was a great time to travel to uh, London. Uh, the Kinks are one of the greatest bands of all time. They have a big discography. I currently have all their albums. Um, there's 59 of them. And I'm going to show you, I'll try to do it quickly, their whole discography. But what I'm trying to do, like I did with that Stones video, is take my favorite tracks, the top tracks by The Kinks, so if you write down these songs and you go to Spotify or you burn a CD, I guarantee you that you will fall in love with this band, or at least the songs on the burn CD or Spotify that you're listening to. And then if you really love that band, you get deeper into their albums. The Kinks, unlike the Stones and even the Who, um, not too many of their albums from top to bottom, bottom are perfect, but all their albums are worthwhile. And the more you fall in love with the band, the more you'll want to dig deeper. They do have different periods, which I'll briefly discuss, where they actually did change their sound. Some of it's a lot more commercial than other portions of it. Some were very successful, some not so successful commercially, but it's all commercial. It's all successful artistically, I will tell you that. So uh, the band started in 64. They started at the same time pretty much as the Beatles and the Stones um, with their debut album. They ended in 93 with the album Phobia. And like the Stones, they were very prolific. Uh, they, every year they were pretty much pumping out an album and sometimes more than one album in a year. Uh, contrary to like a band like The Who, whose whole career, they maybe only put out 12 albums and they might be great albums. But here I'm going to show you 59, uh, although a lot of them are compilations, some of them. So without further ado, let's get into the kinks, get a pen and paper and start writing down the songs I'm gonna pinpoint uh, that uh, I'm gonna pinpoint out of these albums, um, and I guarantee you, you will fall in love with the band. Ask my kids; uh, they're 21 to 26, but from a young age, they fell in love with this band as well. Um, some of the songs you might recognize, but you might recognize otherwise uh, from cover versions, and you'll say, "Oh, I didn't know that was the Kinks." So let's start. The very first CD, 1964, I have multiple versions of it self-titled album called The Kinks. Um, the great thing about The Kinks, if you like CDs, um, is they keep reissuing these albums. I've bought these albums a number of times. Here's a single one with a ton of bonus tracks. Not good enough. They released it as a double with even more bonus tracks. Um, this is their debut album. Uh, it's a good album. Uh, the track on this album that you have to get um, is You Really Got Me, which most people know, although some people are going to say, I thought that was a Van Halen song. Van Halen covered it. Uh, this is the original version, and it's rock and roll, unbelievable, especially considering the year it came out. It's a, an all-time classic by anybody. You Really Got Me. Also on this album is Stop Your Sobbing. Stop Your Sobbing became a classic by The Pretenders, who did an amazing version of it. But here's the original version on The Kinks. Two songs from their debut album, Stop Your Sobbing, and You Really Got Me. We go to their next album. Same thing, original single version and a double disc, both loaded with bonus tracks. The album is called Kinda Kinks. And on this album, the track that I would tell you to get is Tired of Waiting For You. Uh, if you like the kinks at all, you will know these tracks because they're all-time classics. But Tired of Waiting For You, the one to get from this, and another track as well you could try is Something Better Beginning, another beautiful song. Ray Davies, you can see the shirt I'm wearing, is the leader of the band. He writes 95% uh, of it, and uh, anybody who loves rock and roll will tell you. In fact, uh, you ask Pete Townsend, Pete Townsend, who's the greatest songwriter in rock and roll ever? And he's going to say Ray Davies. I don't know if he's the greatest Ray Davies, but he's way, way up there. 
Okay. After that, they actually released the Greatest Hits album. This is an original one from 65, The King's Greatest Hits. Uh, like I kind of had mentioned, a lot of their stuff, and the, for a lot of bands in the 60s, a lot of their stuff was released on singles. So on this album that you won't see on some of the other albums, uh, especially is their second classic single, it's kind of the sister song to You Really Got Me, You Gotta Get All Day and All of the Night. Very reminiscent of You Really Got Me and just as good, to be honest with you. Uh, another track on this album that wasn't on uh, some of the original albums was Set Me Free. Another amazingly beautiful track. Um, mention that. Now we get into uh, a classic Kinks album, but if you're a Kinks fan, if you're not a Kinks fan, let's start with the songs. This is an album called Face to Face. Same thing, two different versions, bonus tracks, and then a deluxe edition, and they keep pumping these things out, new, newer versions. Uh, this is a, a really good record. Um, not a, it's starting to get more Kinks-like and not overly commercial. Um, so this one's a little bit of a tougher listen if you're not a huge fan, but you got to download or burn Sunny Afternoon, an all-time classic, which is from Face to Face. We're going to keep going. We're going to go to this album. Same situation, multiple versions. He has a single version with tons of bonus tracks, and this is a deluxe edition. This is an album called Something Else by the Kinks. Um, there's a great song on here called David Watts. You may know that from the jam. If you like the jam, they did a great cover of that. Um, lots of really good songs on this. Um, some great deep cuts. The two that you got to burn, well, certainly Death of a Clown, which is one of the fewer times where Dave Davies, which is Ray's brother who plays uh, lead guitar, he uh, wrote that song and does the lead vocals. It's an amazing classic for sure. Death of a Clown. The other track that is indispensable on this album is my all-time favorite Kinks album, uh, Kink song, and one of the greatest songs in the history of rock and roll, Waterloo Sunset. Waterloo Sunset, Death of a Clown from Something Else by the Kinks. Um, really good record, though. After that, oh, another version of Something Else. So I got three different versions of that, at least. They released a live album called The Kinks Live at Kelvin Hall. These 1960s live albums are a tough lifts, and all you hear is screaming girls, screaming their heads off. I would not recommend this album. Get this if you're a Kinks completist. And then they started releasing compilations. Here's one called Kink Size, Kinkdom, uh, Kinkdom. And uh, again, this is just a mishmash of extra tracks, but... Um, one of the tracks on this album that uh, you have to get and lift burn is I'm Not Like Everybody Else, which I believe was a B-side. What a classic song that is. I'm Not Like Everybody Else. And another song, track on here that I didn't mention earlier is Dedicated Follower of Fashion, another all-time Kinks classic. We're going to keep going. Um, we're going to get to this one. This is an album that's become more well-known. It bombed when it came out. Uh, a couple of versions of this. This is called The Kinks um, or The Village Green Preservation Society. Uh, this is an original version with a whole bunch of bonus tracks. And then this is a three-disc version. And last year, I believe, they released a giant, one of those giant box sets. Um, Amazing how this album stiffed when it came out, and now, you know, it's a real collector's type CD. It's a great Kinks album. Um, one of the tracks on there, people have take pictures of each other, was a TV commercial. They used it in a TV commercial. You may know that track. Um, I, I love this album. A lot of Kinks fans do. You got to really be a Kinks fan because it's not an overly commercial album. But one track that just stands out for me and it's not the title track, because the title track is great. It's called the Village Green Preservation Society. But there's another track on this album. It's a little song called Village Green. That's the one I would tell you to go to, Village Green, from the Village Green Preservation Society album. After that, they released an album called Author, another great album. Um, tons of great songs on here. You may know Victoria. That's a great song. Um, my go-to song uh, uh, on this album, there's two. One is called Days, which I think is an all-time classic, Days. The other one on this album that you got to hear is a song called Shangri-La. 
an amazing track. Love how it opens with the acoustic and it just builds up. Great track. So Shangri-La and Days from Author. After that, the Kinks actually broke through again. So in 64, 65, they were huge when you really got me. And then commercially, you know, uh, they started not being as successful. This album, which is called uh, Lola vs. Power Man and the Money Go Round, had a huge hit title track, which you probably know, called Lola. Uh, great song from a great album. Now there's a new box set that just came out of this album as well. Um, I love this album top to bottom, but if you want to get into the kinks, uh, you're probably going to download Lola, but I never listened to Lola. Uh, there's another song that's kind of similar to Lola called Ape Man, which is a really fun song. Um, but the one that I really love on this album is called Get Back in Line. Um, he was going through some publishing issues. Ray Davis at the time, not making a lot of money. And he, he was writing strong lyrics about what he was going through. And Get Back in, Back in Line is a great one about the unions. Um, this is a, a smaller album that the band put out after that called Percy. It was a soundtrack of a movie, um, controversial movie. didn't really get much play. There is one great track on this album called Guard's Children. That's the one to go to. Um, like I said, the, the kinks are fun to collect because some of their stuff was not released. Uh, a lot of it was just singles and oddball things. This is an oddball album called The Great Lost Kinks Album. Um, nothing essential on here, just uh, kind of like lost tracks that uh, were not on the other albums. Um, Plastic Man's kind of a fun track, but uh, not essential. We're going to keep going. Uh, and as you'll later see, the Kinks have been anthologized countless times. And honestly, that's the way to get into the Kinks because... Uh, like I said, their albums, to a certain extent, are not essential unless you're a really big Kinks fan. I love their albums, but if you want to get into them, a greatest hits album is a perfect way to go or a best of, and I'll go through some of those. One of the earlier ones that was great is this one called The Kinks Chronicles. Uh, it was a double vinyl, and this is the double CD version of it. Basically, you know, lost um, tracks and uh, B-sides and singles. And I think I mentioned already all the songs on here that I would recommend getting. There's nothing on here that I didn't already mention. Nope, that's good. Good compilation, though. After that, uh, the band changed labels. They went to RCA. Um, they really became like a different band. They added a horn section. They got into doing conceptual pieces. And when they played live in concert, it was almost like seeing a review. Not like a Broadway show, but like a review. Backup singers and horn sections, and they really changed their sound. Um, they're interesting albums. I like those albums, but you honestly, you have to be a really big Kinks fan to love those albums. But I'm going to go through them. Um, the first one on RCA was not so conceptual. This is called Muswa Hillbillies. It's the best out of the RCA albums, I feel. Um, this is a really good album from top to bottom. Um, the, the best song on this album to me is the title track which is called Muswell Hillbilly. Fantastic track, almost country-like um, kinks. A real good sing-along track. I could sing it right now, but you don't want to hear me sing it. The next album they did is this one. This is a couple of versions of it. Uh, let's see, this is the single version, and then there's a deluxe edition with bonus tracks and a whole second disc. This is called Everybody's in Showbiz. Uh, special album for me, because this is the first kinks album I ever owned. In fact, I bought it on 8-track tape, and if you remember 8-track tape, oftentimes they would change the song order so it would fit the four programs of the 8-track. Um, this is an interesting album because it was a double vinyl originally. One album was studio and one album was live. Well, on the 8-track, they mixed it all together. I didn't know that at the time because there was no internet. You know, you bought a, an album or you bought an A-track. That's how the album was. You didn't research it. There was no way to look it up. So when I would play Everybody's in Showbiz on A-track for years, it would go from live track to studio track to studio track to live track. And then when I finally got it on vinyl, it was, a uh, you know, it knocked me out. It's like, what happened? It was a studio album and a live album. I got news for you. The mishmash of the A-track to me was better. Because the live albums, you know, it's the kinks were not at, 
their prime. They were in this conceptual review kind of phase, and you hear it on the live album. It's a good live album, but not a great one. I liked it better when they mixed it together. But uh, it's still a lot of really good stuff. The studio album on, on this album is, the studio stuff is really good. Uh, again, it has the horn section, and not all of it is great, but there's a couple of tracks on this album that are super special. In fact, it's got my second all-time favorite King song of all time, and if you're going to burn a song, you have to burn Celluloid Heroes, which comes from this album, Everybody's in Showbiz. There's another great song on here that's super special also, I think, which is called Sitting in My Hotel, which is just amazing. But overall, it's a really fun album. The live album is fun. It's just not essential. Um, Everybody's in Showbiz. Let's keep going. They're on RCA. They're starting to really get heavy into conceptual things. And their biggest conceptual album, in fact, it was two separate albums, one a single and one was a double album, is this series called Preservation. Preservation Act 1 and Preservation Act 2. 2 is this one, which is a double album, double vinyl. It's a lot of music to take in. It's a purely conceptual piece. You know, I guess you'd call it like a rock opera, but I would prefer to call it, I guess, conceptual piece. I think it's the weakest of all the Kinks albums. It's a lot to take in, and there's not too much on either of these albums that's really essential. Um, yeah, really got to be a Kinks fan to love this stuff, I think. But Sitting in the Midday Sun is a good song. Uh, One of the Survivors is a good rocker. Um, but overall, you know, this is if you're a deep, deep Kinks fan. As is kind of this one, the next one, which is called Soap Opera. Soap Opera, another conceptual piece. It's easier to listen to. It's a, a quicker grow than preservation. Um, you know, everybody's a star. Star Makers, the opening track is a real good track. Um, I like A Face in the Crowd a lot. That's probably the one I would tell you to burn. Uh, not essential. Even A Face in the Crowd is a really nice ballad, but it's not the greatest song in the world. It's a solid record, especially if you're a Kinks fan. But if you're not a Kinks fan... Not yet for this. Uh, the next one, Schoolboys in Disgrace. They're still on RCA. They're still putting out conceptual pieces. Um, this one's a little bit of a tighter album, a little bit more of a rockier album. Jack the Idiot uh, Dunce is a rocker. I'm in Disgrace is a good song. Uh, the Hard Way, which is a, a real kind of classic kind of sounding kinks rocker, is good as well. Not essential. None of the ones I just told you are essential. It's the best of this album, but it's really not the best of the Kinks. But if you're a Kinks fan, those are the, you know, it's it's okay. And then to end RCA, they put out a, another compilation, uh, Celluloid of Heroes, The Kinks Greatest. Uh, this is it on CD, which was different than the vinyl version. The vinyl version is completely different than the CD version, actually. So I, I kept the vinyl. Usually I had everything on vinyl. When I get it on remastered CD, I get rid of the vinyl. But this one I kept because it was different. Um, this is the, how to listen to the RCA stuff. But again, not essential. And I already told you the best songs from that period from those albums. After that, they met Clive Davis, who brought them over to Arista. And he said to Ray Davies and the band, enough of the conceptual stuff. we got to make you a commercial success again in America. And that's exactly what Clive Davis did. Um, the band became commercial. They tightened up their writing and the albums, and they became more of almost like an American rock band. Uh, these albums, to diehard Kinks fans, uh, sometimes are a little controversial. People say that they kind of sold out. I think it's a bunch of hogwash. I think these are amongst the best albums they ever did. Uh, they made it big in America. They would sell out the Nassau Coliseum, Madison Square Garden, and put on major league shows. I thought they were at their best. So without further ado, here's the um, Arista albums. And if you're going to buy a Kinks album and you start getting into the band and you're listening to me and you're starting to enjoy them, these are the albums to probably buy. The first one, and I love this album. Uh, as far as albums go, this may be my favorite Kinks album. Uh, the Kinks Sleepwalker from 1977. This album, to me, top to bottom, is damn near perfect. Um, it's just a great, rocking, commercial album, and I think you'll love it. Uh, the title track is probably the initial go-to track, uh, Sleepwalker. There's not a song on this album that I don't love, whether it's Stormy Sky or Full Moon or Mr. Big Man. It's just a killer album. But if you're going to try something, you go with the title track, Sleepwalker from 77. 
They followed that. Well, I have some bootlegs. Here's a classic Kinks concert from around that time period. Uh, they were rocking. They followed that up in 78 with this album called Misfits. Um, kind of an odd cover. Uh, similar to, to the previous album, Sleepwalker. Not quite as good, but close to it. Uh, Misfits. And actually, I kept the vinyl of that because it's got different version of uh, Live Life, which is a great song that you can only get on the original vinyl. They did it differently on the CD. But on this album, there's two tracks that are essential Kinks tracks. One is the title track, Misfits. Uh, my daughter calls it Every Dog Has Its Day. It's one of the most beautiful, powerful songs you'll ever hear. And Rock and Roll Fantasy, which was the initial single. Oh, my God, what a great track that is. Um, so those are the two initial ones uh, to get from this album. They really broke big this year. Um, I got into the Kinks, you know, a couple of years before this album, and boy, was my luck, uh, my timing was lucky because they broke big. I got to see them multiple times, the, the Coliseum, the Garden, small places like the Beacon Theater later on. This is the album that broke them in a huge way in America, low budget. This is a killer album from top to bottom as well. I don't listen to it much anymore, a uh, little bit more dated than like Sleepwalker and even Misfits. But you may know some of these songs, Catch Me Now, I'm Falling, Wish I Could Fly Like Superman. The title track, Low Budget, is great, A Gallon of Gas. It's a really killer record. Again, I don't listen to it much, but one of the tracks on this album that goes right to my heart is a thing called Little Bit of Emotion. So download that one. Little Bit of Emotion from the Kinks, Low Budget. They follow that up with the required at that time double live record um, from the low budget tour. And it's a really good live record. A lot of classics on there. Great performance. They actually released a VHS video at the time, which I also have on Laserdisc. Um, and the album is One for the Road. Really good double live record. Here it is on vinyl. I kept the vinyl because it came with a big poster and everything like that. That's the original vinyl of it, too. Okay, after that, they released Give the People What They Want. They still were a big uh, selling band in America. They were still selling out, you know, places like the Coliseum and the Garden. This is a great album. Um, this album has aged really well, I think. Um, Around the Dial, Killer's Eyes, Predictable. These are all essential commercial great Kink songs, you probably know the song Destroyer. It's not one of my favorites. Um, kind of copped a riff from the Stones. This album's got two essential songs on it for me that I just think are incredible. Better, Better Things, and the other one is called Art Lover. Art Lover is unbelievable. The first time you hear it, you're going to be like, what? what is he singing about? Is it about a, a perv going in the park staring at little girls? Or is it about a father who doesn't have a little girl anymore? He had one and he goes to the park to think about his little girl. Powerful stuff. Amazing song. Art Lover and Better Things from Give the People What They Want. The next album they did was State of Confusion. Still a big band in America. This album had, actually had a huge hit with Come Dancing, which I'm sure you know. Had a good video for that too. Now one of my favorite King songs. It's a good song. This was the last Kinks album that was really big in America um, when, the, you know, they broke through uh, in, with Arista. Uh, this album's also got a bunch of great songs on there. Uh, Don't Forget to Dance is my favorite from this album. Uh, just a great, great song. Uh, and, of course, I guess Come Dancing, if you want to get that, not my favorite for sure. But this is a really good record as well. Don't Forget to Dance would be the one I would tell you to dance. And then they put out another compilation from around that time called Come Dancing with the Kinks. That's the video of Come Dancing right there. Um, on this album and on bonus tracks and some of the other one is another song I got to mention to you. Uh, I think it's the greatest Christmas rock and roll song there is, but you never hear it on the radio because it's a Ray Davies Kink song and he's singing about Father Christmas. That's the one. Father Christmas, give me some money. That's how the song goes. My father's unemployed. We don't need toys. We need money. That's what the song is about and appropriate to a certain part of today with what's been going on. So come dance with the Kinks, but the song is Father Christmas. 
and I missed one. There's one right there on vinyl. I don't have it on CD yet for some reason. Word of Mouth, which was the last uh, Arista album. Um, it started going down uh, after a state of confusion in between this album. This album a little bit lacking, but still some great songs on here for sure. And the one, the two that, t- that you can get is Do It Again is a really great track. But the really special song on there is done by Dave Davies, and it's called Living on a Thin Line, a monster track, just this moody, ballsy rock track. That's the one to get from word of mouth. That's it. After that album, was uh, the commercial success was starting to dim a little bit, and they went to another label, MCA. Didn't last too long, but on MCA, they released Think Visual. Not a huge success. The initial single was called, um, what was it? It was Rock and Roll Cities. Not a great track, which was Dave Davies' track. But this album got lost in the shuffle. And this song, this album has a song on there that just is incredible. Why, how radio didn't pick up on this song, I don't understand it. But I'll never understand commercial radio because it's pathetic. Um, anyway, Working at the Factory is the song to get off this album. Basically, Ray Davies talking about being a rock and roll star in a rock and roll band, working on at a rock and roll label. You're basically working at the factory. Powerful stuff, an amazing song. Working at the factory, uh, the best song on this album, and an essential Kinks track. There's some other great songs on here, too. Killing Time is phenomenal. Lost and Found is great, too. Uh, they very quickly released another live album called Live the Road from that year's tour. A really good live record. It's kind of lost, but this is a, a, a solid uh, live record. And in fact, Living on a Thin Line, which is from the Word of Mouth album before, is better on this. This is the album to get for that song alone. Living on a Thin Line from the Road. MCA, they had one more album in them, and it was this one called UK Jive. I saw the band at Hofstra University on this tour. It was not the Kinks at their best. <laughs> they were playing Hofstra at the same time the Stones were playing Chase Stadium. And they were a little bit jealous. <laughs> and they were a little bit drunk. And they had a big fight on the stage. A classic Kinks story is when they start fighting on the stage. And Ray Davies had a fight with Dave Davies at the stage at Hofstra. I'll never forget it. But that was on the UK Jive Tour. It's still a good record. It's a little bit long because it was in the CD age. And the albums were getting longer and longer. Um, but this album has at least one song on there that you have to hear, and it's called How Do I Get Close? How did radio not pick up on that song? Where are you, you program directors? What's the matter with you people? How Do I Get Close from UK Jive, an unbelievably great, powerful rock track. After that, we're getting to the end. A little uh, EP they put out called Did Ya? To test the waters, nothing essential on this album. And then the final studio album was this one called Phobia. It was on Columbia Records. They went to another major label, and this was it. Um, it's a good record. Unfortunately, it's too long. Um, there's fif- 16 tracks on this album, and it's just too long of a listen. It just If you pulled out the 10 best songs on this album, it'd be a really, really solid record. Um, but with that said, there's still some great songs on this album, um, for sure. Uh, still Searching is really good. Drift Away is really good. Uh, Surviving's good. Um, the single was Hatred. That was just okay. Scattered is really good. Not an essential. None of those songs are up there with these other classics I'm mentioning. But these are all the ones I just mentioned are good, solid tracks from their last studio record. They did release one more album after that. And it was kind of in the unplugged way, but I think it was before Unplugged even got popular. Leave it to the Kings to two, di- two different versions of it. This is the UK import of an album called To the Bone, recorded live in the studio. Cool stuff. This is the American version of it, To the Bone, which was a double. But they're completely different. So the Kings To the Bone. And these are like, live in the studio acoustic and just a mixture of great things on there comprised mostly of songs that i've already mentioned there's another track that i didn't mention earlier called dead end street that's a like a b-side and that's an essential king track as well it's on actually this album which made me think of it other than that we're pretty much covered um 
the Kinks, as I mentioned, their albums are great if you're a Kinks fan. If you're not, download the tracks that I just mentioned, or feel free to pick up. There's a ton of collect, you know, collections, uh, greatest hits, best ofs, and it's probably the best way to listen to the Kinks unless you're a diehard fan. Here's the singles collection. This is a double collection with the best of the Kinks and some Ray Davies solo. I'm really into the Kinks, so I get bootlegs. This is the Kinks live at Westbury Music Fair. I got it because I was at that show. I've seen the Kinks many, many, many times. Um, here's another one, BBC Sessions. Uh, a whole bunch of BBC Sessions, which I'm really into from the 60s. This is the best collection to get. If you're ever going to go to a store and buy a CD, look for this one, the Ultimate Collection of the Kinks. It's a double. It's an import, but it wasn't a bad price. And this has a collection of the 60s stuff all the way through their 80s. It's just really good. There's 44 songs on this album, double album. That's the one to get if you want a collection. Um, another bootleg live on WNEW from Electric Ladyland on the Phobia Tour. And when I went to see the Broadway show in London, it was called Sunny Afternoon, and they even put out a really cool, very best of from that. But this pretty much only focused on the 60s to the early 70s. So this was a, a great show that I went to England to see. Lots of box sets available, too. Here's a beautiful, huge 6-CD box set called Picture Book, comprising a, a whole history of their catalog from beginning to the end, and another monster box set called The Kinks at the BBC. This is five CDs and a DVD, including a whole uh, concert um, from the Sleepwalker Tour, which I love. Um, so The Kinks, a lot to take in. Um, Start with the ones that I told you to listen to. I guarantee you, you will fall in love with this band um, and agree with Pete Townsend and everybody else that Ray Davies is one of the all-time great rock and roll writers and the Kinks are one of the all-time great rock and roll bands who are known certainly with, amongst aficionados, but through the general public, they're kind of a forgotten band, which is just amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. Please tell your friends, and um, hopefully they'll start catching on and people start watching these things because uh, I'm really enjoying doing them and really just trying to help everybody out there getting to some of the greatest music that's out there that they might not, not be aware of. So thanks again for tuning in to the Alan Rosenberg Show. This is Alan Rosenberg, and I'll see you again.